Well, it's that time again. Windows 11 23H2 has just been released. So I need to do a video on how to install it on unsupported hardware. So that's what we're going to do today. Stay tuned. So in my ongoing protest against Windows 11 system requirements, we're doing yet another installment of installing Windows 11 on unsupported hardware. Each time I do one of these videos, I like to find a new way to achieve the same goal, which is installing Windows 11 on unsupported hardware. For one, because it's kind of boring watching the same method in a new video. And for two, it gives tons of different options for when Microsoft starts to block these workarounds. But before we get into that, we've got to pay some bills. So check out today's sponsor. Is your copy of Windows 10 unactivated? Well, it doesn't have to be because with today's sponsor, VIP SCD key, you can get a valid Windows 10 license for under $20. Stop dealing with that stupid watermark on the desktop with a valid license for Windows 10. Also, with an activated copy of Windows 10, you can upgrade to Windows 11 for free. Just go to the link in the description below and pick up a valid Windows 10 license key. During checkout, use the code CYBERCPU for a 25% discount. Once you have your key, go to your activation settings in Windows 10 and click on the link that says Change Product Key. Enter the product key you just purchased and hit Activate. Now you don't have to deal with that stupid watermark that come with running an unactivated copy of Windows 10. Now, on with the video. Luckily though, from my testing, I have found that the previous way of upgrading to 22H2 works just fine with 23H2 also. However, it would be pointless doing a video showing exactly the same process. So I found an even easier way to essentially do the same thing. However though, while I was preparing this potato here for that video, I had problems installing an update. I wanted the 22H2 on this system to be fully updated in order to do this video. And I had one update that just would not install. Eventually though, I solved the problem and got the update to install. But while I was doing that, I found an even easier way to upgrade to 23H2. Then the easy way that I was planning on covering in this video. So this video is going to cover two extremely easy ways to upgrade an unsupported system to 23H2. However, the really, really easy way only works if you're already running Windows 11 22H2. So if you're planning on doing this from a Windows 10 system that's unsupported, you're going to have to follow the easy way I'm covering first, not the really easy way that I'll be covering at the end of the video. The potato here that we're using for this video is an AMD FX with eight gigs of RAM and a system that fails every single controversial system requirement for Windows 11. It's not UEFI, so it doesn't support secure boot. This system does not have a TPM chip and the AMD FX processor is not on the list of approved processors. This system right here is the perfect platform to use to install Windows 11 on unsupported hardware because you can't get any more unsupported than this potato right here. So let's stop talking and upgrade this potato to Windows 11 23H2. But first, I guess I should probably hook it up. I'll do that and I'll see you in Windows. Okay, so here we are in Windows 11. And just to show you, I'm gonna right click here and go to Task Manager. And we're gonna click right here to see that right here we're running an AMD FX 4300 quad core processor. So as you can see, I'm running an extremely old quad core processor that is not supported by Windows 11. However, it's ironic because clearly I'm running Windows 11. However, we're gonna go ahead and click the start button. We're gonna go to all apps and we're gonna scroll down and I wanna run the PC health check right here. Just to kind of show you that we literally fail every single Windows 11 system requirement. So if we click check now, as you can see, this PC must support secure boot. The PC doesn't support TPM 2.0 and the processor isn't currently supported for Windows 11. So we fail every single controversial system requirement for Windows 11, but we're gonna go ahead and install 23H2 anyway. And to do that, the first thing that you're gonna need is the 23H2 ISO. So to do that, just go to Microsoft's website where you download Windows 11. Now, when you're downloading this, you can't just download the Windows 11 installation assistant because it's only gonna give you the 22H2 ISO. What you have to do is scroll down right here to where it says download Windows 11 disk image. And the disk image will be the new 23H2. And to do that, you just go ahead and select what you wanna download. 
go ahead and hit the download button here. And then you need to select the product language. And then for that, I'm gonna pick English myself and then hit confirm. And then at that point right here, you can click on this button where it says download 64 bit and it will download the ISO. But as you can see, if I go ahead and open up my downloads folder right here, this computer is a little sluggish, but it's because it's an AMD FX. Anyway, as you can see right here, I already have the Windows 11 image downloaded. So this is the one we're gonna work off of rather than downloading a six and a half gig image, you know, just slowing up the video. So I'm gonna go ahead and cancel this one right here. And we're just gonna use the disk image that we already have. All right, and then from there, all we have to do now is mount this ISO. And to do that, you just double click on it. It might take a little bit to mount because, you know, you are running an unsupported PC. And this one, unfortunately, is a little bit sluggish. In fact, it's taken a really long time to mount this ISO, but it in, again, it is a six gigabyte ISO. So, you know, it is what it is. I'm gonna go ahead and skip ahead until this thing is actually mounted. Okay, you're gonna get the security warning right here. Once you get it, just go ahead and hit open and it should mount your ISO for you. And there we go, now we're mounted. And as you can see, if you come up here, you'll see that we're actually sitting in the D drive right now. So if we go to this PC, you'll see that our drive is actually mounted in D drive because you know this computer has no CD-ROM. So the virtual CD-ROM is D. You're gonna to need to make note to that for the next step. And that is going to be to click on the start menu and type in CMD. And from there, you wanna right click and hit run as administrator. Go ahead and hit yes to the user account control and you should get your command prompt open right here. Now from here, we wanna to go to our D drive and we'll go ahead and run a directory here. And as you can see, here is the setup right here for Windows 11 23H2. Now, what we're gonna to have to type, we're gonna to have to type one command right here and it should install and ignore all the system requirements. That's what makes this one a fairly easy way to install it. And to do that, all you gotta do is go CD, sources and then from the sources directory you want to type in setup prep dot exe and then you want to do forward slash product space server and go ahead and hit enter and it's going to take a second but it should start the windows 11 setup and as you can see, there it goes. So at this point we can go ahead and close some of these windows here, but go ahead and leave your command prompt open at that. All right, there you go. Now, what you're going to notice right off the bat is it says install Windows Server. Well, it's because that's what you asked it to do. You asked it to set up the product server, and that's what it's doing. And we're going to go ahead and go through these windows right here. Through the rest of the process, it should be essentially like it is installing Windows on any other device. So this is the point where you normally will run into trouble by running a unsupported PC because it's checking things. But... Clearly it finished. So now it gave us the license agreement. We can go ahead and hit accept. From here, we wanna keep files and settings. Go ahead and hit next. And then it's gonna go through and check for updates. And this might take a minute to check for updates, but depending on the speed of your internet connection, it might not be too bad. But I'm gonna go ahead and skip ahead until all the updates are checked for. Okay, now it's to the next step right here, making sure you're ready to install. This might take another second too. Keep in mind that you're doing this on an unsupported system. So obviously, you don't have the kind of processing power that you probably should have to run Windows 11. So a lot of these steps might take a little bit longer than you think they should. But unfortunately, it's one of the downsides to running unsupported hardware. But we'll go ahead and wait it out until we get to the next window. All right, so right here it says ready to install. So we can go ahead and push the install button and it should install not Windows Server. It's actually gonna be regular Windows, but the installer says Windows Server. Now, as you can see, that's an incredibly easy way to install Windows 11 on unsupported hardware. Now, this is essentially the same process that I did before to upgrade to 22H2. However, in that way, it required a script to do it. This way, it's simply running a command from the command prompt to initiate the server install like you would do to get around the hardware requirements the old way. But this way it doesn't require downloading a script. So it's gonna take a little bit for this to update. So once it finishes updating, I'll meet you back in Windows. Okay, as you can see, we're back in Windows 11. And if we go ahead and hit start, we're gonna go into settings. And then from settings, we wanna click on system and then scroll down to about. 
And as you can see, we are now running 23H2. Now, as you can see, that was a pretty simple way to install 23H2 on unsupported hardware. Unfortunately though, now that we have Windows 11 23H2 installed, we got to go back to 22H2 so I can show you the other method. And if you ever want to do that, it's relatively easy. All you got to do is go to system, go down to recovery right here. And then right here where it says go back, just go ahead and click the go back button. And then from there, it's going to ask you, or it's going to get things ready and things of that nature. And it's going to ask you why you want to go back. Just check for another reason and hit next and then hit no thanks. And then at this point you go ahead and hit next next again, and then go back to the earlier build. Now for this next method, you're not going to believe how easy this is. In fact, it's so easy that I'm afraid Microsoft might break this workaround. So that's why I wanted to cover both methods in this video. Once you see what I'm talking about, you'll understand why. However, this second way has some prerequisites that your system has to meet. First off, it needs to be running a fully updated copy of Windows 11 22H2. Most specifically, you need to have the KB503 1455 update installed. Now, this is the update I was having problems with on my test system here when I was preparing for this video. I simply could not get the update to install. Eventually, what I had to do was run check disk and then DISM, and then after that, the system file checker, then I was finally able to get the 1455 update installed. Now, I'm pretty sure that my issue had nothing to do with the fact that my system was unsupported. I'm pretty sure the problem had to do with the fact that this system is kind of abused. And somewhere along the lines, I corrupted something while using the system to film videos. However, if you have issues like I did, then I've done videos in the past on how to run the system file checker, and I'll refer you to those videos if you have any issues. I also found out that in my research that if you're running malware bytes, it will block the 1455 update. So if you're having issues with, that's another option you can check out. But just make sure that you have that update installed and let's go ahead and jump back on the computer and I'll show you how to get 23H2, the really, really easy way. You know, you're gonna be blown away at how easy this is. But first, I guess we're gonna have to wait for Windows to restore to 22H2. So once it finishes, I'll meet you back in Windows 11. So we're back in Windows 11 and we're gonna go ahead and click start, go to settings click on system and then scroll down to about and you can see we're back on Windows 11 22H2. Now, like I said, this is a really easy method. And just to prove that I am still on the same system, just in case someone questions me on that one, I'm gonna go ahead here and you can see I'm still using an AMD FX 4300 quad core. So, like I said, the most important thing about this method is you have to be on the KB503 1455 update. That's critically important for this to work. And the reason why this works is, I'm gonna show you right here, we're gonna go ahead and open up Chrome and we're gonna click on the update that we're gonna install. We're gonna, up, we're gonna install KB502-7397. And what this is, is it's an enablement package. You see, the way that Windows works, at least current versions of Windows, is that while you're still on 22H2, they kind of slip in these updates with your previous updates. So that when 23H2 comes out, you've actually already installed all of the different feature updates that need to be installed for it to be 23H2. However, they're simply switched off. And in order to switch them on, we're gonna install KB502-7397, which is the enabler enablement package right here. And to do that, unfortunately, all I have is a direct link to the enablement package itself. I couldn't find another link from an official Microsoft site. However, this is a direct leak from Microsoft's update servers. They're, it's their update catalog right here. So all you got to do is I'm going to go ahead and leave a link to this update in the description below. You click on that and it'll simply download this one. And it's only 179 kilobytes. It's an extremely tiny update. So it shouldn't take any time at all for you to download it. And once it's downloaded, all you're going to have to do is go into your downloads folder. So we're going to go ahead and close this and open our downloads folder. And as you can see, we have KB502-7397. And 
we're simply going to install it. Nothing special, no other things that we have to do, just simply install this update. So we're gonna go ahead and hit yes. It's gonna install it. And like I said, this is only a couple kilobytes, so it's not gonna take very long to install. So once it installs, we're gonna go ahead and push the restart button and restart Windows. Okay, our restart's done, we're back in Windows, so let's go ahead and check to see if we're on 23H2. We're gonna click Start, Settings, then we're going to click on System, we're gonna scroll down to About, and as you can see, we're on 23H2. So, there you go. You're now running Windows 11 23H2 on unsupported hardware. I have to admit though, that this old potato is getting pretty slow on Windows 11. So, it might be worth looking into upgrading your hardware soon if your system is as old as mine. Also, I heard some rumors that Microsoft may be planning on blocking a lot of these methods on running Windows 11 on unsupported hardware. There's currently a beta build of Windows 11 that will not install using any of these methods. Now, of course, that's a beta build, and it doesn't necessarily mean that Microsoft's going to implement this in later builds of Windows 11, but it does mean that Microsoft has been working on blocking these workarounds. Maybe they'll implement these blocks, and maybe they won't, but if they do, I guarantee you that I will do everything that I can to find a way around installing Windows on unsupported hardware. But in the meantime, check out my latest video on testing Windows 11 gaming performance. It's getting pretty good and starting to become a pretty good rival against Windows 10. As always, you guys have a great day.